In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Welcome to another session of Ask Father, brought to you by the Fatima Center. My name is Father Michael Rodriguez, and I am a priest of the Diocese of El Paso, Texas. Today we have a question from Dolly. Dolly's question is, Please, Father, I need clarification on the Divine Mercy devotional. Once again, in response to this question, as I try to emphasize in a number of my videos and also in answering other questions, it's extremely important, dear faithful, that we take very seriously the message of Our Lady of Fatima in all its respects. And one of the important elements of the message of Our Lady of Fatima is that our Blessed Mother emphasizes in Fatima traditional Catholic teaching and traditional Catholic devotion. Especially, uh, I would highlight devotion to um, the Holy Eucharist, we could say devotion to Holy Communion. Obviously also a, a great importance she gives to reparation. That's also a very important part of our Catholic devotions. But just in general, Our Lady of Fatima is emphasizing traditional Catholic doctrine and traditional Catholic worship. If we just take this to heart, it will bring a lot of clarity and light to a lot of the confusing things that are taking place in the church today. And that's both with regard to false and erroneous teachings that are widespread in the church, and also a lot of different devotional practices that have kind of sprung up in the last 50 years that don't really have their deep roots in our um, traditional Catholic piety. And this is the case with the Divine Mercy devotions. And so that's why I place it in this context. Just in general, I would advise every single Catholic, stick to the devotions that have a proven Catholic track record, meaning that we've had them for centuries and centuries and centuries, that the saints themselves have practiced these devotions and promoted them, and that have also, we might say, fostered and help the saints grow in their sanctity. You could just ask yourself that one question with regard to the divine mercy. You could ask yourself, well, okay, how many saints were nourished by this devotion? How many great Catholic saints practiced this devotion? Um, and, you know, you, you come up really with, you know, you're empty-handed. Uh, even the whole question of the canonizations that have been made in recent years, I think there's a very legitimate questions about those canonizations. Um, one of the reasons for that is because those canonizations haven't even f followed the um, traditional canonical uh, process. So someone might say, well, Father, but, you know, Faustina, you know, she was canonized the saint. And I would say, well, I think we just have to be very cautious because, um, again, all these uh, so-called canoniz canonization processes have not exactly been done according to the traditional teaching and practice of the Catholic Church. So, saying this just in general, I would just caution against the Divine Mercy devotions. Um, I will just say a quick comment, in particular, with specifically to, I think, the prayers that are the most common prayers, you know, kind of the prayers that make up the chaplet of the Divine Mercy. In and of themselves, I would say they're okay. I mean, I think they're, they, they, they do have a, um, a, 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 a Catholic, a kind of Catholic uh, a piety to them because we're invoking the mercy of God, of our Lord. We're, you know, um, invoking the power of our Lord's passion and death. And so, you know, they're, they're I'd say, good prayers. But I do want to point out to you how these prayers, nevertheless, are inferior to our traditional Catholic prayers, um, invoking God's mercy and also making reparation. And also to point out a, an important distinction between these prayers and also the, the prayers that we have from Our Lady of Fatima. 
the, what we might call the, the Fatima prayers. So these prayers from the divine mercy that are commonly prayed are the following. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us and on the whole world. So as I said, you know, good prayers, but very specifically, I strongly encourage you, um, look to devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus and to the precious blood of Jesus. The more you uncover the treasures of our Catholic tradition with regard to these devotions, I know you're going to be really, I would say, just awestruck and astonished. I have been. You know, I'm still doing a lot just in my own priesthood to learn more of the beautiful devotions to the sacred heart of Jesus and to the precious blood of Jesus. And it's just remarkable how rich those prayers are and how they both invoke God's mercy, but also how there's a very uh, um, heavy emphasis on reparation, reparation for sin. This is something that is truly Catholic, that truly unites us to the passion and death of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and something also that Our Lady of Fatima um, teaches us. Um, I, I'll recommend to you two books. There's, I'll even show them to you here so you can see them. The, both books are about, you know, five to 600 pages, just to give you a sense of how many prayers are there. This one is called the Sacred Heart Book, and it's by Father Lassance. So it's a book that just all, all kind of different devotions that we have as Catholics to the Sacred Heart. And then this one is a similar and it's devotion to the precious blood by Father Waltz, who's a missionary of the precious blood. I'll just mention to you an indulgence uh, prayer that we have to the precious blood. Notice its similarity to the, to the prayers of the divine mercy, but notice also the difference. And that prayer is, Eternal Father, I offer thee the precious blood of Jesus Christ in satisfaction for my sins, and for the wants of holy church. Notice how in this prayer, not only are we making satisfaction, let's say atonement for one's sins, but specifically also for the needs of Holy Mother Church, not just for the world in general, which is also a good prayer, but also for those of Holy Mother Church. Um, some, I just want to read to you a few beautiful um ejaculatory prayers that we have to the Sacred Heart so that you can notice how the devotion to the um, devotion to the Divine Mercy, how it really isn't adding anything to what we already have as Catholics. As Catholics, we pray, Sacred Heart of Jesus, I trust in Thee. Sacred Heart of Jesus, I trust in Thee. Eucharistic heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. We're affirming that the heart of Jesus is in the Holy Eucharist. We're not just saying, oh, my Jesus, have mercy on us, or divine mercy, have mercy on us, but Eucharistic heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. We are affirming our Catholic faith in the real presence of our Lord in the Holy Eucharist. And another very beautiful prayer that we pray to the Sacred Heart, O most Sacred Heart of Jesus, pour down thy blessings abundantly upon thy church, upon the Supreme Pontiff, and upon all the clergy. Give perseverance to the just, convert sinners, enlighten unbelievers, bless our parents, friends, and benefactors, help the dying, free the souls in purgatory, and extend over all hearts the sweet empire of thy love. Amen. Notice there how we're invoking the power and the mercy of the sacred heart of Jesus. Again, his open heart from which blood and water flow. But we're invoking that power and that mercy upon the Catholic Church, which is the, the only ark of salvation, upon the supreme pontiff, 
who very much needs our prayers, especially in today's times. Um, how specifically the prayers to convert sinners. We can also say convert heretics to enlighten unbelievers. These are very important petitions that traditionally we as Catholics are always praying. We're praying for the extirpation of heresy. We're praying for the conversion of sinners. We're praying so that all those who do not believe the, for example, the Jews, the Muslims, that they convert to the true faith, that also all those who call themselves Christian but are not truly Christian, that is Catholic, also praying for their conversion. These are elements that we find in the beautiful Catholic devotions of devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus, devotion to the precious blood, also devotion to the blessed sacrament. There's another excellent prayer book called the Blessed Sacrament Prayer Book, also by Father Lasantz. The more you're familiarized with these devotions, the, I mean, the less you'll see a need for the divine mercy. Um, a couple of practical dangers that I see with the, the devotion of divine mercy is that I think there are many Catholics that begin to pray the divine mercy chaplet in place of the rosary. And definitely I would say, most certainly don't do that. Um, the, there's, the prayer of the rosary, you know, has pride of place in our Catholic religion. There is no prayer, um, we basically could say, other than, you know, holy sacrifice of the mass for the clergy, we could say that obviously the divine office, but there's really no prayer that's more powerful than the prayer of the rosary. That I think is also a danger that you have those Catholics who begin to replace the prayer of the rosary with the, with the divine mercy chaplet. Um, so that most certainly is a practical danger. And then, as I said, it just, it, it, it pales in comparison to what we have in terms of our devotions to the Blessed Sacrament, to the Sacred Heart, to the Precious Blood, that truly have a proven Catholic track record. Finally, I encourage you, pray the prayers of Fatima. We have the seven Fatima prayers. And I'll point out to you how in one of those prayers, again, it's very similar to the Divine Mercy um, prayer where we pray, Eternal Father, I offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity. But there's in particular one very important difference. There are a number of differences, but one important difference is the prayer of Fatima is the following. This one, again, brought to us from heaven, taught by the angel of Fatima. Obviously, um, it, let's say, uh, supported by Our Lady of Fatima. And that is Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, I adore thee profoundly, and I offer thee the most precious body, blood, soul, and divinity of the same Son, Jesus Christ, present in the tabernacles of the world. In reparation, and, and, and here for all the sacrileges, outrages, and indifferences by which he himself is offended, particularly in the Blessed Sacrament. This is the last thing that I just, just in closing, I want to emphasize. It's extremely important that our devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus, to his precious blood, to his real presence, to his mercy, basically we could say to his open heart, to his passion, elements that I would say divine mercy kind of uh, takes up, but that it's that is very much emphasized his real presence in the Holy Eucharist, in the tabernacles, and the reparation that must be made for all the offenses that he suffers in the um, Blessed Sacrament, in the Holy Eucharist, even in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. With what we're witnessing today, with so many abuses in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, with even the attempts to completely get rid of the Catholic Mass, the traditional Latin Mass, it's that much more important in our day to be making this reparation as we also invoke the um, infinite mercy of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Sacred Heart of Jesus, thy kingdom come. Our Lady of Fatima, pray for us. Mm -hmm.